What's up guys, Mike Tierney here from Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about forced air heaters. Now when it comes to forced air heaters, a pile of them uh, as options, lots of different variant, variances of them. Um, in this case, we're gonna talk about a few. Um, the one that we have in front of us um, is from Heatstar. It's a new brand that we are carrying. Um, it's kind of phasing out some of the Mr. Heater products. It's the same company that supplies them. It's just, this is more of a contractor grade. They look very similar. Just some of the components uh, have been upgraded. So you might be used to seeing it as a, uh, a Mr. Heater Max. Well, in this case, it's the, the new look from Heatstar, uh, virtually the same style of, of heater. So what does forced air actually mean? It means that we have a heat source, so a fuel, whether that's in this case could be propane, natural gas, in other models, more like diesel, jet fuel, JP8, um, kerosene, lamp oil fuels, those kinds of things that are going to heat our, our, our use our air heaters use that for heat. So in this case, um, this comes kind of two ways. We have a unit that will have uh, natural gas supply or propane. So there are fittings that do need to be changed out inside. That should always be done by gas fitters, licensed gas fitters. And these are mounted typically permanently in a shop or garage. The beauty about these is they have a very low clearance that they require, but you do need some accessories to make these work. Now these should be always installed by a certified fitter, gas fitter, um, and then an electrician to come in to wire them. But they do have a fan on the backside and a venting kit um, that you will need to vent out that exhaust. There are two forms to that. You have a horizontal or a vertical mounting kit depending on your application. So those kits come separately and we supply those as, as a horizontal or vertical kit. And they will have to be plumbed in at the back there, whether you're going up through your roof or out through the wall. Codes vary, so verify that with your local building code um, um, regulations, and then you know, make your selection there. So you can see that it has a fan on the back, so it requires a fan to blow that heated air downwards to the rest of your garage or your shop. So they're rated again for BTUs per hour and size them accordingly. You will find a variance between the natural gas and the propane. Look at the different BTU ratings. Uh, propane will have a slightly lower rating on the uh, heat output that it will have. So if you are having to convert it, just verify the specifications um, on the website or on the box that you're looking at. So if this is not something you want, or you know, it's maybe in addition to, we have other heaters that fall under that force air application. And we'll talk about those next. Next up are our tube style heaters. It's propane or variable fuel. So in this case, the, uh, the 50,000 BTU heat star unit has a, um, an option. So you can run them on um, kerosene, you can run them on diesel, you can run them on JP8, which is a jet fuel style aviation fuel. Um, it also has uh, fuel oil, so grades one and two. Um, but whatever you're using, don't mix those fuels. Drain out all of them, use it all up, or you know, get rid of that, uh, that, that type of fuel, and don't combine those types of fuels. As you change those fuels, you'll also have a, um, an adjustment that you would have to make and um, on the back side there's gauges and then there's a, uh, a pressure um, screw. So going from different fuel to different fuel they atomize differently and you do have to slightly adjust that pressure setting manually and all you're doing is watching for your flame. You don't want your flame coming out past the tube. There's a little nose cone inside here, you wanna make sure that your flame is on the inside of that cone. So by just quickly adjusting, just very slight turns, you'll be able to move that flame, that heat, back and forth, and you wanna make sure that the flame doesn't come out. A, you run the risk of burning, someone walking by too close, or if something else is a piece of equipment's too close, that can cause uh, some scorching, 
but you're also superheating the tube and the material. So you may start to see burn marks appear. So dial that in, it only takes a second or two and uh, you'll get the best you know, performance out of your, your, uh, your flex fuel type heater. If you don't want to go with kerosene because of, you know, the smells, the, you know, the fume that it gives off, it does create a bit of soot. So for like new home building, like if you're doing, you know, drywalling and there's no heat in the, 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 the house yet, um, that's really not the way to go. But if you're heating a shop, farm, farm shop or, you know, a construction shop and you don't mind the smells because it's already got diesel smells in it, you do, uh, you do have the option with these and um, you know, they, uh, they work really well for creating that heat. You can also go to the propane style. So little tube, but if you looked at it, 60,000 BTU versus a, you know, a larger tube at 50,000. So you, know, you get a really big bang for your, your size of heater. So this is a propane unit, so really simply, it just has a propane line going to a tank. You just have a, 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 a dial to turn, push the igniter, it ignites, a little fan will blow. Both units are required to be plugged in. They won't work without being plugged into the wall. Now the problem is a lot of these heaters need at least two feet or so between them and a surface. That way you don't you know, run the risk of fire and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty hard to plug into the wall when your cord's only you know, six or eight inches long. So with these heaters, their draw on amperage for their motor and their motor pump in this case is so low, it's only a few amperage. You can get away with and you will require a, an extension cord. So you don't want to have these jammed right up against the wall because that's going to cause issues or possibly scorching or fires if they're too close. They recommend about two, minimum of two feet from any surface wall. So the propane is more portable when, um, you know, when you, you, you want to go from a shop to possibly you've got a large, you know, shack that you want to heat up quick or you want to get this underneath a piece of equipment. A lot cleaner burning. This is okay to use inside with the exception of using it as supplemental heat. You don't want to be using this to heat your home because that's gonna, you know, A, it's against the, the, the law, and B, you're gonna run the risk of, you know, carbon monoxide poisoning pretty quick. You're not supposed to store propane tanks inside. That's, that's a big no-no. So you would have to have a, a longer extension hose, which we do carry in accessories and you would have to have the propane outside the tank. That being said, if you're using these in an environment that's cold, so a unheated shop, and then you want to go and work in that shop, well, if it's been cold for a period of time, as temperature drops, propane, not the unit, but the propane fuel that we're using, will start to lessen its ability to boil out of itself to create the gas. We call it liquid propane to come in. We don't use the liquid side, we use the gas side of that propane. So as temperature drops, you will start to see that the heaters struggle a little bit. So when you get down to about minus 28 to minus 30, if your tank's been sitting outside, which it should be, you may find that the heater won't start up right away. You may have to bring that, that tank in to warm it up slightly because the temperature at, at minus 28 to minus 30, propane stops boiling out of itself. So your heater that you're trying to heat the space actually won't work when it gets down to extreme low temperatures. So you'll have to heat that tank up a little bit, just bring it in, you know, put a warm towel around it or something. Don't put an ignition source on it that could end up really bad. Just heat that tank up a little bit just to get that propane moving again within the tank and then start up. Once it's flowing, it should maintain itself. So that's a little bit of a tip there if you're struggling with a bit of uh, propane issues when it comes to uber cold weather. Likewise, when it comes to kerosene, diesels, they also have a temperature where they'll start to gel. So they don't necessarily freeze solid. Particles might if you have any water 
you know, vapor in it, but the, the, the fuel itself starts to gel up. So be careful on those temperatures. It's down to that minus 28, 29, give or take. And that will start to clog filters that are in line. That's an important part of these, uh, these units. There's a filter in line. The fuels that we use in these units are not super clean, so they do get clogged. But as that temperature drops, that gelling starts to clog. You may find that they sputter. They may not ignite at all. So again, just warming that system up a little bit or adding additives in your fuel to boost the low temperature to prevent anti-gelling. Sea foam works really well and then there's a whole bunch of diesel additives that you can get or, or, or kerosene additives. Uh, quite often if it's in the winter where we see some, you know, some changeover, you may have summer diesel that you're using. You go and put it in for, you know, to use that up and then all of a sudden that starts to gel up, whereas the winter diesel already has a lot of those additives in. So quite often, um, you know, you can run into some issues if you're using old summer diesel in super low temperatures, it may start to gel up on you. So just be mindful of that. Otherwise, these heaters are, you know, super dependable. There's not a lot having to go on. They do have um, thermostats on them, so you can set it at a temperature and it will kick on, kick off as, as needed. A lot of them have the low um, oxygen sensor and they'll just kick off. There's also a tipping function, so if it does tip over, it will turn off. So, you know, be mindful of some of the features. If you're looking for those features, just have a look on the website or on the box if you're in the store, and that'll list all of the things that the, uh, the units um, are capable of doing. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.